We're going to convert a non-deterministic finite state automaton to a deterministic finite state automaton in this video. We know that this uh, state diagram here is non-deterministic because of these epsilon transitions. Like, if I was sitting in state number two, I wouldn't know whether to uh, follow the B transition or to jump to state number one through the epsilon transition for free, be unless I could somehow kind of look ahead in the input. And uh, since I can't do that, then that makes this non-deterministic. I'm going to show you how to convert this to a deterministic one by getting rid of these epsilon transitions. Before we begin, uh, I think it's always a good idea to write down uh, some strings that are accepted by this NFA. And uh, first let me point out that this, this NFA here is not uh, one that corresponds to any particular regular expression. I just kind of made it up by drawing some uh, states with some uh, transitions between them. So here, here's uh, some things to put in our, yes, this is accepted column. Uh, the, the simplest one here might be just a, a B, that, that would be accepted by this. And how about A, B, A, B, that one will work as well. Uh, let's try something down here, uh, C, C will work. And uh, actually just C by itself will work. We just go C and then we can jump across that epsilon straight to state number three, our accepting state. So C by itself will work. We can do C, C, A, B. Uh, we can do something like a C, C, A, and then jump through this epsilon to state number one, and then do C, C again. So we go C, C, A, C, C. That one will work. And we could do uh, C, C, A, jump through epsilon, and then uh, C, and then jump through epsilon. So we'll do that again. So C, C, A, C, and then that, that'll work, C, C, A, C. And uh, the last one I'm going to do here is, uh, let's do A, B, A, C, A, B. So let's do it again. So A, B, A, C, A, B. That, that'll work as well. And then uh, under a no column, these, these ones are not accepted by it, would be something like, uh, how about just B? We can't do B because there's no way to get to uh, to follow a B from state number one. Um, likewise, let's see, just A by itself, that won't work. Cause a, that puts us in a state where it's not an accepting state. We could do something like uh, C, B, C, B, there's no way to get anywhere with a B after following a C, so that doesn't work. And uh, how about C, A, A, we could do C, uh, jump over here, A, and then uh, we're kind of kind of stuck there. So, uh, oh, excuse me, we could do that C, A, C, a, A, but that leaves us at number two, so that doesn't work. So this will serve as kind of a double check when we're all done. Now we're ready to start doing our conversion from NFA to DFA. We're going to do that by um, making a little chart. We're going to basically take all the information out of this F NFA and write it out in a grid format. So let's make our grid here across the left hand side. We'll put all of our state numbers, 1, 2, 3, and 4, and across the top we'll put all of our possible inputs, A, B, and C, and uh, we're going to be adding another column here in just a moment, but we'll discuss that So uh, yeah, when we get to that. Um, from state number 1, following an A, we can go to state number 2, and following a B, there's, there's nothing to do there, and following a C, we go to 4. From state number two, following an A, uh, we can't do an A from there, so we'll leave that blank. Uh, state number two, following a B, we go to three, and state number two, following a C, you don't go anywhere, so we'll leave that blank. Uh, for three, following an A, we can go to two. Uh, following a B, go nowhere, and following a C, we also go nowhere, so leave that blank. And then finally, state number four, following an A, nothing. Following a B is uh, nothing, and following a C goes to 3. So we've filled out this portion of the chart. It's all based on information that we've seen here. Now I'm going to add this uh, fourth column, and this fourth column I'm going to label that epsilon star. And remember the star means zero or more, so we got zero or more epsilons. What does that mean? That means uh, if, we're, if we're in any particular state, and we follow zero or more epsilon transitions, so remember that zero or more, where do we end up? So like for state number two here, we'll just jump right to two, 
we followed zero or more, well, we could go to ourselves, because that would be zero epsilon, but we could also go to number one by following one epsilon. So for number two here, we can actually end up in two possible places, ourselves and in number one. Uh, let's go back and do number one here. From number one, th there is no epsilon transition coming out of it, but there is always that sort of implied uh, zero epsilon. So we can just stay where we are. So in fact, that's a good rule here for this column is that at the very least you will always have your own state listed here and you might have some others. So for state number one, uh, we can only go to ourselves. For state number three, uh, again, there's there's nothing, no epsilons coming out of it, so the only one we can say for sure is that we'll stay at ourselves. And then for state number four, we will always stay on ourselves, and we can also go to number three. So this now fully encompasses all the information out of this chart. Now we're ready to build another, another chart out of this. Use a different color. This one is draw another diagram, and um, oh, before I do that, uh, we mark here that uh, this is the state number one here. This is our starting state, and we'll circle number three. That's our ending state. So any uh, ending states that you had over here in this diagram, you should circle them on the left hand side. If I had two ending states, for example, if number four was also an ending state, I would circle number four as well. Okay, so back to this one here. Uh, what we're going to do is we're going to write down the starting state, number one, and then we're going to put here A, E, or Epsilon star, B, Epsilon star, and C, Epsilon star. And what this means is that if I'm in state number one and I follow an A followed by zero or more Epsilon stars, where do I end up? Let's try it out here. So if I'm in state number one, and I follow an A, I'll go to, well actually I'll do that over, I'll just use this chart here. Um, if I'm in state number one, and I follow an A, I'll go to two, so let's jump down here to two, and then and then I follow an, uh, zero or more epsilons, well that, that's over here. So I'm gonna do this kind of like zigzag pattern here. I'm gonna start in state number one, I'm gonna go to two by following an A, zigzag down to two here, and then over across to uh, two comma one. So right here I'm gonna write two and one. And then for, for B, if I'm in state number one and I follow a B, well, I don't go anywhere. So just leave that one blank. And then for a C, state number one, I go to a four, zigzag down to four, and then I go to four, three. Okay, now uh, I'm done with this row here, and I've just added two new entries here, two and one, and four and three. So I'm gonna write that down here on the left-hand side. And now I've got two more rows to fill out. So the, the two one here means if I'm in either state two or state one, if I'm in either of these two and I follow an A, I'm gonna end up in two. So I can zigzag down to two and then look across to two comma one. And I write that down here, two and one. So let's do that again here. If I'm in either two or one and I follow an A, I'm gonna end up in two zigzag down to two and then look across to the epsilon star and write down what you see there. That's two and one. Let's do it for B. So if I'm in either one or two and I go to, I follow a B, I'll end up in state number three, so the zigzag down to three, followed by an uh, epsilon star. So I just end up back in three. So just write down what I saw there. And then we'll do that same thing for C. So if I'm in one or two and I fall, I go to a C, I'll end up at four zigzag down to four, and then write down four comma three. All right, so I've just, uh, I got two and one, three, and four and three. Now both two and one and four and three are, are already on the left-hand side, but three is new. So we'll write down three here. And now we've got, a, got two rows to finish here. So if I'm in state four or three, four or three, if I'm in either of these two states, and I follow an A, I'll end up in two, and then zigzag over to two and look across to the epsilon star and I get two comma one. Uh, do it again for B. If I'm in four or three and I follow a B, nothing. So I get to put a line there. And then for three, if I'm in four or three uh, and I follow a C, I get to state number three, 
we'll go to 3 here and zigzag across to uh, 3 for epsilon star. Okay, nothing new added here. Both 2 and 1 and 3 are on the left-hand side, so nothing to add to the left-hand side. Looks like we got one more row to do. So for state number 3, following an A, I go to 2, zigzag over, and I go to 2 comma 1. For a B, there's nothing there. Draw a line. And from state number 3, following a C, nothing there. Draw a line. And have I added anything new here? No, I haven't. So this chart is complete. Uh, let's mark this here. This is our starting state. And our ending state is anything that involved a 3. So that's this one here, the 4, 3, and the 3 are both accepting states. Now we can convert this to a, uh, an actual picture here. So let's pick another color to go with. I think I'll go with maybe uh, turquoise. And so we'll start with state number one here. Let's put up here this uh, the 2 comma 1. That's a state. Then we've got 4 comma 3 is a state down here and 3. And uh, 4, 3, that's an accepting state, so we'll double up that line. And 3 is an accepting state, so we'll double up that line. Now we can fill this all out. Uh, we start at number 1. Following an A, we go to 2, 1. Following a B, we go nowhere. And then following a C, we go to 4, 3. From 2, 1, following an A, we go to uh, itself. We'll do it like that. And then following a B, we'll go to 3. And then following a C, we'll go to 4, 3. Now from 4, 3, following an A, we'll go to 2, 1. Uh, following a C, we'll go to 3. And then from state number 3, following an A, we will go to 2, 1. So that goes up here. And that finishes that row. So this is now our final um, DFA. It is a deterministic finite state automaton because there are no more epsilons here. And uh, from every single state, we know what choice to make. There, there are no uh, duplicate choices anywhere. Let's go back and uh, just do our double check here. So is is A B accepted by this? So if we start here at uh, let's if we start here at A uh, A B, yes, we end up on accepting state. So that one works. How about A B A B? So we'll go A B A B. Yes, that one works. Do C C. Perfect. C by itself, we end up in an accepting state. Good. Uh, C C A B. Good. C, C, A, C, C. Very good. How about C, C, A, C? Yes. And A, B, A, C, A, B. Yes. That one works. And then our double check here for the no column. Uh, B obviously does not work. Uh, A doesn't work because we don't end up in a final state. C, uh, B doesn't work. We don't end up anywhere useful there. And uh, C, A, A, uh, we don't end up in an accepting state. So we verified that all the things that we said were going to be accepted, in fact, are. And all the things that we said weren't going to be, in fact, are not. So we have successfully converted an NFA to a, a DFA.